In this lesson, we're going to talk about partial indexes. Sometimes it makes sense for us to only index a portion of the documents in a collection. When we index on a subset of our documents, we can have lower storage requirements and reduce the performance cost of creating and maintaining indexes. To achieve this, MongoDB supports the creation of partial indexes. Let's look at an example. Take, for instance, a collection of restaurant information. Maybe there are lots of queries for finding a particular cuisine in a particular city. But of all these queries that the server receives, 90% of them are for restaurants with 3.5 and above stars. So instead of creating a compound index on city and cuisine, or city, cuisine, and stars, instead we can create a partial index, where we index on city and cuisine only if the restaurant has 3.5 or more stars. We're effectively reducing the number of index keys that we need to store, and therefore reducing our space requirements for our index. This can be useful if our index has grown too large to fit into memory. Partial indexes can also be useful with multi-key indexes. As we know, with multi-key indexes, keys are created for each array entry. If our documents have particularly large arrays, then the server would be creating lots of index keys. This could cause issues with fitting the index into memory. We can mitigate these kinds of issues by creating a partial index. I'd also like to point out that sparse indexes are a special case of partial indexes. With a sparse index, we only index documents where the field exists that we're indexing on, rather than creating an index key with a null value. We can achieve the same effect by creating a partial index where the filter expression checks for the existence of the field we're indexing on. It might be somewhat obvious, but I'd like to point out that partial indexes are much more expressive than sparse indexes. With partial indexes, we can define a filter expression that checks for the existence of fields other than the ones we're indexing on. Therefore, we suggest that you use partial indexes over sparse indexes. Let's head over to the shell so we can see partial indexes in practice. We can go ahead and switch over to the M201 database that we've been using. And from here, we can go ahead and insert a document similar to our example. And let's go ahead and run a find query on our document matching on city and cuisine. And of course, we find the document we just inserted. And now we can go ahead and create our explainable object and rerun our query. Now we'd expect this to be a collection scan because we have not created any indexes yet. And indeed, the winning plan was to do a collection scan. Let's go ahead and create the partial index from our example. Now if we run the same query again, we'd expect it to use the index because we're querying on the keys of our compound index. And our document has greater than 3.5 stars. And when we scroll up, we see that, whoa, we're doing a collection scan. I did this because I wanted to point out an important part of partial indexes. In order to use a partial index, the query must be guaranteed to match a subset of the documents specified by the filter expression. This is because the server could miss results in the case where matching documents are not indexed. In order for us to trigger an index scan, we need to include the stars predicate in our query that matches our filter expression. And now when we look at our explain output, we can see that we're indeed doing an index scan. Just remember that your query predicate must be guaranteed to match a subset of the documents that will match our filter expression. This property will hold regardless of which documents happen to be in the collection. Let's take a moment to discuss some of the restrictions of partial indexes. So we cannot specify both a partial filter expression and the sparse option. And that's OK, because we can actually make a sparse query with a filter expression. We also can't make our underscore ID index partial. And that's because every document has to have an indexed underscore ID field. And finally, we cannot have our shard key be a partial index. Let's recap what we've learned. So we've learned how to create and use partial indexes. We've also learned about some of the advantages and disadvantages of partial indexes. We've learned how to predict when a query will ignore the existence of a partial index. And we've learned how to emulate a sparse index with a partial index. And that should give you a good overview of partial indexes.